So I have a question for you. Are you afraid of God? What do you think? Yes or no? Sometimes we are, sometimes we aren't. Sometimes it depends on our understanding of God, really. And what we think about God, someone once said, is the most important thing about us. And as Christians, one of the great things about that is, is that we, we come to know Jesus and we're taught in church, I hope, that uh, the whole point of Christianity is we're invited into a relationship of love. We're invited into a relationship of intimacy so that we can know Jesus as our friend every single day. And that whenever we talk to God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, wherever we are, he is there and he's available and he cares and he listens and um, he supports us and he encourages us. And that's pretty amazing. And that's the friendship of God. But there's another thing that's talked about often in the Bible. And it's the, this notion of the fear of God. And in this passage in Amos, you begin to get something of the, the awesomeness of God. That we forget that he would hold the whole of our solar system with the, you know, the sun there. And these tiny little specks of dust that's the earth and all these other planets. That he would hold that in the palm of his hand so easily. He is seriously massive. And it talks here about how in verse 8 of chapter 5. He who made Pleiades and Orion. Who turns midnight into dawn. Who darkens day into night. Who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land. The Lord is his name. He's this incredibly powerful God. And it also shows us, and we've kind of picked this up as we've looked at Amos over the last few days. It also shows us what the God that we worship, the God that we are to have this tension of that with the fact that we get to walk into his presence because of what Jesus has done for us. And at the same time, it's like flipping. It's like the friendship and the fear. We have those two things in tension. And Amos also shows us what causes God to grow in anger? And these are kind of some of the most famous words in the Old Testament where God says um, through Amos, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. And he goes on and he says, basically, away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never failing stream. Don't come to me with your worship songs, your worship albums, your, your, your music events, all this stuff that you, your church gatherings. Don't come to me with that if you forget the poor. The poor and the gospel, the poor and the God that you and I worship are inextricably linked and we abandon the poor at our peril. God shows us clearly that not only does he love us intimately, but he is God and he is the almighty creator we are to be in a sense in awe of him and also in that light to take so seriously the things that he takes seriously